got this badass 2014 Jeep Wrangler in here. It's been lifted and whatnot. Really dang nice. And I'm gonna add on some train horns. Woohoo! Train horns! Train horns and an air management system, uh, just a basic system. Uh, that'll be here tomorrow, so I'm gonna start on the train horns today. Um, I'll show you what I got going on here. So just a Horn Blaster Shocker XL kit. Uh, I'm gonna install them up here. This guy doesn't take this truck mudding, so uh, it'll be fine up here. You can see this horn up in there. This is the longest horn, and then it bolts into this aftermarket bumper, which I drilled a hole. And then the other horn here goes like this. So you can see that'll have a nice flow forward. Uh, won't be obstructed by anything and you still can't really see it. I'll do the same thing on the other side. Now this is the second longest horn and the fourth longest horn. That was the first longest horn and the third longest horn. Uh, that way they sort of set the best possible so they can kind of stack, save space. You can see here is the front mounting bolt. I just drill a hole through, bolt it up, and then you gotta mount the back. Now I made this t uh, sheet metal tab. This is 16 gauge, and it's got a nice little offset in it to add some strength, and it's also got two 90 degree uh, bends to add some more strength. Uh, and then I just, I'm just prepping it for paint. But this goes up in there, and it'll actually bolt to the frame. So I'll put it up in there, drill and tap the holes for this plate, and then this actually is what mounts the train horns. So here is this end here. It's a .40 uh, drill bit. So I took a .425 drill bit just for a little bit of clearance, tolerance. It goes on there. Then you take the washer that comes with it and the jam nut. Jam nut goes on there. And then you can take the actual fitting and that is the act that is doubles as the mounting point and the fitting point. So that's where your air goes in. Here I have the hardware that I'm using, uh, some quarter inch bolts, which I just stick into this cardboard and then paint the tops of them. Uh, you can't really see, but there are some brackets there. I'm on a tight schedule with this one. This is gonna be a one day turnaround, 24 hours basically. So I gotta get this stuff painted and let it dry because it's, paint's supposed to take 24 hours to dry. So uh, I'm doing that right away. And then tomorrow I will get the uh, Air Max compressor and tank, which I ordered from airslimate.com. Uh, I ordered a three gallon aluminum, which is black and red. Matches this. And the compressor is also black and red. One thing that sucks about this is that it's very tight on space. There is no room in this thing, really, so to speak, for anything. Uh, back here, I could have elected to put the tank back here, but I just think it looks tacky. If you open this up, there is this little compartment down here, which comes up. Nice compartment for storage, but it's not quite big enough for an air tank uh, because the air tank is about 8 inches tall. So I'd have to do some funky stuff with this lid. I just don't want to do that. So I'm going to try and install that stuff underneath. So that'll be fun. Here's an old piece of a bed frame. And here's the bracket that I made from it. I cut out a, a uh, 6 inch piece and then I notched it to fit around my frame. And now this will bolt to my frame right there, and each horn will go in here. Uh, this hole was already in there because I cut it off the end. Uh, so that hole is there. I'll use that for a wire tie to organize the tubes. So that can just go right on there. And now another thing that you need obviously is an electric valve. So what I got going on here, I'll show you. Now this wire here is the positive wire. Uh, on these valves, it doesn't matter which one's positive, which one's negative, as long as you have one of each. So this is what I'm actually going to run to my switch, which will be on a constant uh, power source, so that you can hit the horn whenever the key is even off. And then I ran the ground wire right there to that bolt with a shrink tube ring terminal. So I make sure to use shrink tube so that uh, corrosion doesn't get in there. Here is the black Air Max 480 compressor and uh, three gallon aluminum powder coated air tank. Uh, it has a bunch of ports on it. It's a pretty nice tank. I like this tank, nice and light. Uh, this compressor here is nice also. It has the rubber isolator bushings built in as well as a black line, which is pretty cool. A lot of these have the stainless line, but I like the black sleek look. Uh, here is a cool little fitting for a gauge. So you can run your half inch line into each end. It's just a basically a T, or it is a T. And then you have a quarter inch line which runs your gauge. So you have your T 
tank pressure you can run that easily uh, here is some of the wiring and mounting hardware and here are the brackets they're still wrapped up as well as the uh, air inlet filter I unwrapped these clamps for the air tank there's the air tank now you can see the way these work is pretty simple you have this round band which goes around your tank here is the mounting tab that mounts to wherever you're going to mount it. Now you notice it has the screws in it, but I got to take the screws out. And then all you got to do is assemble it like this. So there's the holes in there. And then leave these loose while you're putting it together. And in order to lock this around the tank, all you have to do is tighten these screws up all the way. Pretty handy, works pretty good. They're really strong. This is the part I've been dreading, trying to fit all this stuff in this little uh, tight clean truck so uh, yeah wish me luck Right now I'm working on the wiring uh, of this train horn and compressor setup. So here's the relay, uh, it's basically a Bosch 40 relay is what it's called. Black is the ground in this case. The red striped is the power, the power to the compressor. Uh, the red, normal red is the power in and the white is the switch. So if you don't know how a relay works, basically when you hit a switch it sends a signal to send the main power through. Uh, so first I started off, easiest step put the ground here uh, I almost always just screw these into the frame and that's always the ground pretty much and then uh, I run the power wire now if you look in here you can see this is just a it's 10 gauge power wire um, and then it's got an inline fuse holder here which you can buy on eBay they're like shit like a buck a piece buy 10 of them for like 10 bucks and then I put a heat shrink tube buck connector here and then I start running the lines uh, for the power wire here I'm just using this 10 strand wire that I got from Menards uh, I've used this on many compressors it works fine uh, and it's really easy to work with because it's nice and thin and effective uh, so I start with running it in through down this way and I have my relay location already planned which is on the underside of the frame way in there and that will splice into here. Any air management system has to have a pressure switch of some sort. So if you see, this is called an add a fuse. A lot of people will take the wire and they'll just pull the fuse out and then stick the wire between the fuse and the plastic housing here, which is not technically the correct way. I've done it that way, um, but this time I'm using an add a fuse and this goes down to the pressure switch on the tank. This has power, that way the compressor will only turn on when the truck is on, uh, so you don't drain down your battery. And then the fused one to your compressor is constant 12 volt because it's straight to your battery, which is fine. So that is that. I'm running all the wires in, a, in places that are inconspicuous and I'm going to make it look nice. And then I have to run the main switch wire, which is also going to be a constant um, power from really any source. A little push button it's gonna be mounted right in here uh, some people like to hook them up to their horns also but for this application I'm gonna leave the stock horn and just go with the train horn on an auxiliary switch so right here I'm working on the final step which is wiring in the switch itself uh, I started with the orange wire is my primary uh, 12 volt constant power and then my gray wire here is going up underneath on the firewall and then over to the valve which is on the other side of the frame. Now this is on a fuse circuit which is important to make sure that if it ever grounds out the it'll blow the fuse instead of having the horn be stuck on. Uh, yeah. Anyways, I'm excited to test this thing out. I think it's gonna be fucking loud. Now I got everything on this Jeep done so I'll give you a little rundown and uh, show you the underside. Show you how nice and clean the install is. So up front here, the tank is right there. 
the horns there's two there and there's two there now I wanted it to be kind of inconspicuous and it is you would never even notice that stuff was there underneath I have the brackets mounted here for the tank and the tank obviously now you can see that it fits in here nice and clean and is avoids the steering rod which is obviously important uh, I did have to take and loosen those sleeves and uh, spin the collar the other direction because it was pointed towards the tank and it would have hit so right now there's about an inch of clearance there throughout the entire travel which is perfect and then over on this side here's the uh, Air Max 480 compressor with the braided line which goes into the end of the tank there and the check valve I uh, just took and wire tied that so it makes sure it doesn't really hit anything or move. Uh, you can see it's grounded right directly to the bracket. The air inlet filter is right there. It uh, should be out of the way of any moisture. Up in here, there's the pressure switch plumbed into the tank with an elbow. And then the wiring is ran all the way across to the relay. And there's the valve, which runs the air line to each of the each of the horns. Now, if you look here, you can see that that air line is close to the radiator hose. So what I usually do is I just take some uh, wire grommet and wire tie it around the hose where it's coming into contact or where it might be coming into contact with coolant. Now this is fine for coolant; it only gets about 200 degrees. But if you have something like exhaust, you're gonna have to build a heat shield. Uh, but this is good for coolant. Now right here, you can see I have another piece of uh, wire loom wire tied on there, somewhat snug, so it's snug so I can still move it, but now what I'm going to have to do is up in there, you might not be able to see, but up in there it's touching up against the radiator on the one line, so I'm actually going to slide this up and block it from touching the radiator. So again, I wire tied that up further on the hose where I could easily get to it and then I just slid it up because it's a lot easier to do it that way. So that's just a little tip. I'll take a look at this valve over here and the way it's plumbed in. It's pretty simple. Actually, it's really simple. The one line comes from the tank, goes directly into the valve. Now follow the directional flow on the valve. You can see it's going to be labeled. See there's the arrow right there. So that's going to point towards your horns goes to that manifold and then like I said it goes over now down here on each of these train horns this one happened to line up nicely with the bumper bracket so all I did was drill the hole in the bumper now the top one I have a little black tab which self tappers into the frame because I can't get a nut on the other side and then comes out and bolts onto the mounting flange on the horn this side here is similar except it's backwards so the bottom one has the mounting flange with a quarter twenty or a quarter inch uh, self tapper and the top is way up in there and it was a real pain in the ass but I got it up here the mounting bracket for the upper section of the horn you can see that right there there's the airlines on the inside and notice how tight together these are they're nice and tight they're actually touching barely so that makes a perfect fit and it clears so it's pretty cool. Hey, you ready? Yeah, go ahead.